What is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here with yet another video and today I'm going to show you how to take amazing pictures with your camera and how to post them on Jet Photos. So today we're going to do some plane spawn at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. There are going to be some very exciting planes coming in today such as the British Airways Airbus 380 and the Qantas 7879. So let's go out and plane spot. <laughs> The settings I'm using today on my camera are manual, shutter speed 1 to 640, f-stop 11, and ISO of 100. I'm photographing these planes over here at Founders Plaza, which is the best place to plane spot here at Dallas Fort Worth. You got great views as aircraft come in to land. Today, the south flow is in use with runways 18 right being used for landing and 18 left being used for takeoffs. I get to see a bunch of really interesting things such as the Valeris A321, the Lufthansa A340-300 from Munich, it was delayed today, the Cargolux Boeing 747-400, the UPS Boeing 747-400, the American Astrojet, the American Piedmont Airbus A319 Retro, and of course, the two big exciting ones. We're going to start off here with the Qantas 100 years special livery 787, so let's see this airplane come in. The final plane for the evening would be this gorgeous British Airways A380. Let's watch this amazing plane come into land. Wow. That's actually a good idea. Stand up on the table. After that awesome time plane spine, we're going to go back to the editing suite and uh, edit some of these photos. So we're going to go here in Lightroom and I'm going to insert my memory, I'm going to insert my memory card here. So here we go, memory card should be in and Lightroom should automatically detect that it is in. Here's some pictures of the Delta 350 models again. But let's go to our most recent pictures here. Yeah, here we go. Here's some of them. Uh, I also saw a Cargo Lux 747, as you can see here. We'll edit those later. But I'm just going to show you some samples here today. I'm going to uncheck all these. We're going to choose the Quartus 787. I think we'll go with that sequence to take a look at for today's sample. Uh, we'll probably do UPS 7472, Valeris 321. Yeah, let's do, do all of them to the BA 8380. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm going to shift click which will select this whole section and then I click on the tick mark here that selects all the aircraft right there and then we click this import button which will import all the photos here so this will show it in uh, a grid view I always like to take a look at the individual view right here here you can see this gorgeous airplane right there look at how beautiful that is kind of a blurry image but we'll find better ones here so we let all these load in it will take a little while for this to happen uh, because we've got a couple gigabytes here of files, so it can take this a little while to call. And here we go, we're going to the Valeris. Well, that's the UPS. I'm pretty happy with how, how some of these stops turn out. You can see they're a little bit dark, but we will be fixing these issues in the edit. I usually will suit a little bit darker than what is actually needed. Went out to the Piedmont. See, it's loading, loading, there it is. Look at that gorgeous Piedmont plane, isn't it beautiful? I saw PSA when I was here in May, and hopefully I can see more of these retros. I've now seen Astrojet here, uh, which came in literally right after this one. I, I don't know how much more incredible it gets than you see a bunch of these coming at the same time. Alright, so it just told me that it ejected the memory card. What that means is it finished importing all the photos. Yep, there's the A380. Look at that, the greatest ugly, the greatest ugly plane in the world. Golf x ray Lima Echo Alpha. What a beautiful plane. I will say the A3 and the BA livery does look pretty decent. And yeah, these stops are looking pretty good. I think some of these I think some of these will get accepted on a JP. You can see here it did in fact get ejected. My memory card was uh, listed as untitled is gone. You see the Scarlet 2i2, that's the uh, um, 
preamp that I'm using interface to uh, hook up to the computer so you can hear the, the mic nice and beautifully. Um, I am hand holding this because uh, I was not able to bring my uh, tripod stand for it. Well, not really a tripod stand, but the uh, boom on. All right, let's pick one of these to edit. Now that we've edited, now that we've imported them, let's pick one to edit. So we got to pick which one to edit. Uh, first, we're going to go into develop. We start by being the library when we import them. Go to develop, so pull up this screen here, and these are usually the tabs that I use here. We'll get more into what these are. Now we gotta pick which one to use. So what we're looking for is we're looking for an image that's about as crisp and as clear as possible while having decent framing. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be enough for us to edit. I also like the double beacon, so I usually will look for that when I'm looking for my pictures here. So here is this one. Double beacon, clarity is not great though, so let's find a better one. This one's actually a little bit out of focus. Oh, this one's super sharp. All right, let's save this one. I'm gonna go ahead and the first thing I always do is the lens correction because my 18 of 400 does have some issues. And then let's reframe this here. We're gonna go here. Shift left click. That allows me to readjust the frame size to the uh, image that I have here. There we go. Therefore, I use the same frame size that I had when I took the image. I'm going to go with this for now. This looks super crisp, so something that JP might actually take. Super important to find crisp images. That looks to be decent. Not perfect, but decent. So just looking for the best one. This also looks pretty decent. This one. That looks good. We'll keep this one in mind as well, and we'll do our lens correction and resize here, just so I can tell that this is one that I'm considering. Okay. Let's consider this one. This one looks like it might be decent. Again, I zoom in so I can get a better idea of the photo. This one actually looks a bit out of focus. This one also looks decent. This one looks okay. Again, we're just looking for the best one. Again, this is another one I'll consider. This one here also looks pretty decent. I kind of like this one. If nothing else, if these don't all get used for jet photos, I can use some of these for an Instagram post later. However, when you're trying to post to a professional website like Jet Photos, or if you're posting to FlightAware or Airlines.net, you want to pick your best, best image that you have. That one's a bit... Uh, probably not. Alright, these are starting to get a little bit beyond what I'd probably consider to use. Oh, by the way, that Airbus there, that was a uh, devoted flight today. Um, no, actually it was an A319 that they developed. But anyway, uh, we don't see Airbuses as much, at least uh, 320 family aircraft at uh, Dallas as much anymore because Delta's pretty much using the all A220s except for the 321s from Atlanta. But yeah, I think that's it for now. We might come back to these because you can get some good angles from here, but the pictures have to turn off just right for it to get on JP. So let's go back to the ones that we identified as potential contenders all else. So this one. And then this one. Um, then uh, let's actually increase, let's actually get these a little brighter so I can tell more that I consider them contenders. So I've cropped them in, but now let's increase uh, the brightness because they were all taking a little bit dark, so we want to fix that. Obviously, when you're increasing exposure, you don't want to go too much because then, you know, that photo is blown out. Or you don't want to go too dark because then nobody can see what it is. You want to have a nice happy medium where it's nice and light but not over processed. This actually looks a little bit over processed. Let's bring this down a little bit. There we go. So, this one looks decent. Could use some improvement though. This one is looking pretty good. And this one here also looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one because this one looks like it is the one that has the best chance of getting on the jet photos. So from here, we're going to go ahead and frame it better. We're going to go back to our framing tool and we're going to frame this better. So what we want to do here is we want to get it so that the fuselage is right in the center. We're going to tighten that up a little bit. Get the fuselage right here in the center. Just adjusting my... There we go. I like this. 
all right there we go i'll go with that all right next things we're going to do is we're going to increase the sharpening now for jeff rose you want to go to around 100. now normally uh you wouldn't sharpen an image that much but for jeff rose you do need to because you're going to compress this image significantly and therefore making it uh a bit, a bit making it a bit um a bit brighter or a bit more sharpened over sharpened is actually kind of useful for jet photos. Don't do it too much. You do want to sharpen a little bit. All right, let's increase our clarity. This is still looking a little bit soft, so I'm not sure what I think about this one. Let's see about this one. Let's increase our clarity here a little bit. Clarity, sharpness, and detail are very important when creating a good photo. Yeah, this one actually is looking better once I add these. Um, so yeah, let's go with this one. This one is a bit sharper, a bit better focused, so that's obviously super important. You can see down there, the, uh, is the rat out? Or the ram air turbine doesn't look like it. Beacon lights are on. I love this livery. This livery is awesome. This would actually make for a great regular livery. Anywho, so we've done that. I do think this is a little bit over, overexposed. So let's go down to about here. And then I also increase the contrast and the shadows. The purpose of doing this is it adds a little bit more depth to the image. So the increased contrast adds a little bit more contrast between the light and the dark areas. And increasing shadows allows you to see the details under the wing and such a little bit better. So super important to do that. Next, I usually increase the vibrance and saturation a little bit because otherwise the image looks a bit dull. So there we go. I've done by about five. I think that's pretty decent. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to do like 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 this or like this or like this or like this. You're basically having a black and white image. Uh, some of this can be cool if you're doing black and white stuff, but I'm going to just do it plus five right now. Let's see how that looks. All right, let's see if we do plus seven. That might look like a subtle change, but I kind of like how that looks a little bit richer. All right, we're going to go with that for today. So next is a very important process. So there's all these little details I have to do when you do these adding to make it perfect. And the next one we're going to do is remove the dust spots. We so might be like, I don't see any dust spots here. Well, these little do you know, there are actually dust spots on this image. And we're going to fix that and we're going to find them. So we're going to use this dehaze tool here. So if you do it extreme amounts, you will be able to see dust spots either I usually do it to dehaze all the way to 100 because that usually allows me to see dust spots a little better. They'll show up as black dots you can see right here. And then we're going to use this little circle tool here. And we're going to hover over where there's a dust spot like right here. I'm going to click and it will automatically select a portion of the image that is similar to this and it will automatically fill it in. There we go. Here's another dust spot. And it automatically selects where to... Uh, get the point from. So we're going to fix some of these here. You want to fix all of them if possible. And if you need to make manual changes, you can. You can just select the point. You can move it around to somewhere else, like, like here, for example. Those look good for now. And we're going to find and correct all the dust spots. Okay, we have now found all the dust spots. We put the dehaze back to zero and we're good to go. Okay, so this image looks like it is ready to upload. Um, I still feel this might be a little bit too light, but usually Jet Photos likes this image is a bit too overprocessed in my opinion. Anyway, here we go. That thing's ready to go. So now let's export. File, uh, export. Before you export, you do want to just check all the image just to ensure you're happy with it. We want to insert today's date. I usually do my folders by date. You can do it however you want to, just so we do it a way in which you can organize it. But I usually do it by the date that I took the photo. So 0717, there we go. Um, so I'm going to edit a few more of these and show you how I did a couple more of them. Okay, we're now up here on JP and we're going to show you how to get your photos up on the website. So here you can see you can upload a photo. However, when you go to select your photo, you can't just pick the photo that you got because if you select the photo from the raw format that you uh, export it and I always export at the full size 
because sometimes they can be a little compression of the course if you export a smaller size. Uh, if you try and uh, upload this, you can see it won't take it because it's too large. So we're gonna go. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna duplicate it, and then we're gonna open this in Photoshop. We're gonna make a couple of critical changes to it. All right, here it is in Photoshop. We're gonna go to Image, Image Size, and we're gonna change our width to 1280, which is the maximum size that you can post on JP. Now, if you have been on JetPhotos for a while, and I believe you have over 100 images, you can then start uploading at 1980p. However, most images are gonna be at 1280. So you select OK, and Photoshop will automatically uh, rescale it. I'm gonna select Command-0 to once again bring the image back to where I want it to be. There we go, away. There we go. We're gonna bring this back to full screen by command zero, which allows us to get that. Anyway, let's go to filter, neutral filter. So this is very important. And then you're gonna select, and then you're gonna select JPEG compression artifacts. You're gonna select that. It's gonna do its thing. It's gonna remove the compression. You're gonna select OK. The important thing for this is to remove compression artifacts because otherwise the image will get rejected for having compression artifacts when you compress the image. Very important. We're now gonna go to file, save as copy on all the raw since it would have been just save as, but we're gonna do save as copy. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the file with this one because we don't need the copy anymore because we want this one as our copy. Always choose maximum quality, very important. This can cause rejections. So, and so it's maximum in both cases, both the slider and the uh, quality selector. And now when you go to upload the photo, it will be accepted go. It's next important to pick some information about this photo. This autofill is very, very useful. So we need to enter in the aircraft registration and the airport. So here's the registration, Golf X-Ray Lima Echo Alpha. We're just going to enter that in. And then we're going to enter the airport, which is KDFW. Use the four letter code. That is the one that Jeff Photos wants you to use. Click autofill and all this information will be filled in for you. Of course, I didn't make the mistake of not putting the dash in here, so we're gonna fix that real quick. Autofill, and there we go, the aircraft info will autofill. Hot photos, this is a section for new registrations and repaints only. Do not be uploading your normal picture as a hot photo, it will get rejected. Comments to screeners, this is important if you're uploading an image and you want to have it accepted, say a cropped UPS 747, for example, which I did get up. You do have to put it in the screen of comments that you had creative framing or else it will get rejected. Um, but yeah, hot photos, I use this for general aviation aircraft. Usually if I photograph a G GA plane that hasn't been uploaded before, I'll put that in there and say new registration or say repaint it. If an aircraft that, you're, that you have photographed and the aircraft that you photographed in your photo was in an incident, that can be considered a hot photo, but otherwise do not enter this, just leave it blank. All right, we're going to upload photo. All right, we can now put it on a watermark. Some people choose to do this, some people choose not to. I generally do do it, but I ensure that the watermark does not obstruct the aircraft because I hate it when people do this. This is annoying. Please stop doing this, folks. Uh, but I'll put it up here or in the corner or something. It's not in the way. All right. Let's put it right about there, center top. That seems perfect. All right, apply. And then it's now in the queue. So when you go to photos, and then manage queued photos, you'll be able to see what images you have in the queue. So mine is currently the 21,646 image in the queue. This number will go down as it's been in the queue for a while. Uh, currently, it takes about two weeks for an image to go through queue, somewhere between, somewhere between 10 to 14 days. So that's, what you can, that's what you can expect it to take to get a photo through the queue. So it won't happen right away unless you do have a hot photo, in which case it skips the queue and usually get screened within about one to two hours. So if you have a hot photo, get screened pretty quickly. Otherwise you have to wait 10 or 14 days. So um, I'm gonna put some more photos in the queue. I usually am putting photos in the queue about once per day right now as I have a lot of queue slots. I don't try to dump them all at once, but uh, sometimes it's worthwhile doing that, but usually not so much. So, so we're gonna wait here and then I'll get back to you to see how the photos did. Now we're here on Jet Photos a little while later. Let's take a look to see how these photos have performed and if any got accepted. So there have been a couple of pictures that did get accepted. 
the British Airways Airbus 380 was the first one accepted and I was really happy with the results of this photo. Uh, this photo's turned out quite well and it's done quite well in performance on the website too so I'm really happy about that. In addition, the Piedmont Airbus 319 got accepted as did the SkyWest CRJ 700. So let's take a look at those, th let's take a look at a couple photos that did not get accepted because obviously getting accepted is awesome but sometimes some photos don't get accepted and you have to re-edit them. So take a look here at the photo section, we can go to the rejected photo section. You can see what got rejected and why. So let's take a look here at the American Airlines 737-800. Now this one got rejected for categories wrong or missing and then for being over processed. I did fix the categories that were wrong or missing on my second submission so hopefully those will get accepted this time. The UPS 747 got rejected for categories wrong or missing as well as being over processed. Again with the American one I fixed these as well. The Valeris A321 just got rejected for being over processed. Once again I'm going to fix it and attempt to re-upload it. So these are things you have to do to get your photos accepted. It's not exactly a magic formula necessarily but if you follow the certain rules I show you, take your photos in excellent lighting um, and it's sort of the sun is behind you and it's sort of the tail is lit up. You want the tail to properly be sewn uh, to have light on it otherwise it's not going to get accepted. Uh, you want to have the uh, lighting just right. A lot of things that have to go just right for, for your image to get accepted. But if you do all those things, your image will get accepted onto Jet Photos about 50% of the time. So, yeah, Jet Photos is very particular, but once you get the strategy down, you're good to go. So, hopefully this video helped y'all out, get your photos and your plain spawn images accepted onto Jet Photos. So, with that being said, I want to thank y'all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and God bless you.